So finally get back on this uh, AEG jigsaw project. So I've run these through the cleaner and this one label right here is really in not very good condition. The other labels are look like they'll be okay. And this one I just might take off completely. But what I decided to do was to try to recreate this particular label. So I'm going to use these um, these Avery uh, Ultra Duty labels. So that's Avery number 60503. And they're supposed to be chemical and waterproof, UV, tear resistant, all that. So we'll give these a try, see how they hold up. So here is the resulting label. So I just designed this in, um, in Inkscape. So the AEG, I just kind of traced that from various logos I found around. That was actually designed back in the 1800s, I believe. So it's not like a, a standard font. It's really just a logo. And then this FSPE 60. So that one was a little bit more difficult. So I ran, I, first thing I did is I scanned this and ran it through a bunch of those font uh, recognizer programs out there. And what it came back with was actually a font called uh, Volkswagen AG, Volkswagen Auto Group. So they actually made their own font. So that was the closest it came to. It was also pretty close to Futura Black Rounded was another font that it was, but there was a couple of small differences in that one. So that ended up being pretty close. It's not exact. So this may, this font may have been something custom that AG came up with because it, it didn't, it wasn't a perfect match for any of the other fonts that it scanned through. So first thing I'm going to do is try to remove this old label. So that looks like it has some kind of foil backing. So while I'm at it, I think I'm going to take off the safety label. It doesn't really serve much of a purpose for my applications. And it's already starting to come off. So, so in the other guy, I think I'm just going to keep this original label. It is coming up a little bit on here, but I think that looks okay. So you can see this thing has got quite a few scratches on it. You can see under the label what the uh, original condition of that would have been. So I think I'm going to try to do some a little bit of polishing on this. So in order to protect this label, I'm going to put some tape on it. And then I'm also going to cover up these vents. So if you're doing the polishing, I usually use these Novice 321. The three will actually actually scratch the surface a little bit. So some people don't even, some people start with the two. But this has a couple of gouges in it. So all you need is basically just a, uh, an old t-shirt is what I typically use. So it has like a very fine abrasive in it. So after you get through the number three, it's going to look worse than where you, when you started because it basically took off that top layer on there. So don't panic. It's perfectly normal after you do the uh, the three. Next, you start. You go to the novice number two, and this is the most tedious step. So this doing the the novice number two, you're basically going to keep polishing until you're happy with the result. So it could take 10 minutes, it could take an hour, you know, depending on how how good you want it to look. So I'll go ahead and uh, polish this, these two pieces with the number two and we'll be back. Alright, so I got it about as good as I want. I got, went ahead and popped these halves together just to make sure I have a uniform finish there. So now we're going to put the number one. And the number one is just basically almost a watery uh, type substance. It's really just more of a cleaning. All right, so now we'll go ahead and try to pop this this new label on. I 
All right, I think that'll work just fine. So here's something new I'm going to start doing with these restorations. I'm going to start putting a little tag on there with a uh, basically the serial number, the model, and then this QR code will point to part one, the part one video of this to give it some provenance or any any future owners. Alrighty, and that's using that same label material as this one. So hopefully those will stay on there. So one of the major pieces that was missing of this was that there's supposed to be a cap on here on this guy. So I went ahead and started to design one and my first attempt it came out with something that was way too big. Second attempt came out with something that was right about the right size but still didn't fit on there quite right. So my third attempt, I got something that fits on there pretty nicely. Just like that. And the material I use for this, I 3D printed it. It's a copolyester. Part of the problem with ABS is it is uh, not very chemical resistant. So this, this material is a lot more stable, a lot more chemical resistant and it doesn't warp when you're printing it as much as ABS does. So that, I think that'll turn out all right. So I got all these parts cleaned and now it's time to start reassembling them. So it's a good thing I took a video because I don't know if I'd be able to put this back together. Um, and luckily somebody sent me one of the uh, part schematic in the last video. It had a link to it so that'll help a little bit. So the way I kind of lay out the hardware here I just kind of group them by by length and size and then most of the time it's pretty obvious what you need first thing up we got this I think it's like a filter or it might be some kind of sound deadener it has two nylon washers on either side and it has some clips on there to kind of hold it in place and for grease I just like to use this uh, Lucas oil bearing grease it seems to work well Give us a really light coating We'll pack grease in the other compartment. Next thing I we have is a couple of springs. Those go on these posts right here. And that goes on there. On top of that. And then finally this piece right here goes underneath of this metal, this sheet metal piece. And then those are held down by some socket cap screws. And we'll just slap a little bit more grease on here. So one thing I missed, this little black piece that just slides right in there. Start packing this with some grease. You don't really need a lot. It's one of the mistakes people make. They put too much in here. And then we got this shim, which looks to go behind everything. And then it looks like this piece right here goes next. So it looks like I'm going in the wrong order here. So what I'm going to need to do is take this piece back out. Probably leave the shim in there. But i got to put the, the drive ends because those two screws right there. So what we got to do next is uh, get this switch installed. Got a little spring here we got to put in as well. So next next thing we can put in is the the armature assembly. So if you wonder why I don't don't always replace the bearings on these, I basically just check them to make sure there's no not a lot of not a lot of play in them, and that they don't sound very scratchy. So these ones actually sound pretty good. 
and they spin pretty easily so there's really no reason to replace those unless, unless you really wanted to but at that point it's probably just a waste of money. Pop in the air diverter here. And then the armature assembly. So it is kind of an interesting design with this little plate here. It actually pulls it forward. So it's gonna get it's gonna be a pain to get this to line up. But I think I can do it. All right, got it in there. So now we got a couple of screws down in there that go through the case. So we'll go ahead and put those in now. Okay, now we can finally move on back to where we were before. So we'll put on this piece again. And these two plates go on after that. Got a shim on there, and then this clip goes right on there. So we'll just, I clean this gasket. I think it should be good to reuse. I didn't see any tears in it. So we'll just pop that back on. And we'll pop this cover on. And finally we can put in these screws back in. So it looks like I put the, uh, I oriented the switch the wrong way. So let me go ahead and uh, swap this around and be right back. So it looks like I missed a part somewhere because this bearing, let me open this back up and see if we can figure out what happened. All right, should have been pretty obvious, but you know, I missed things. I think it goes right on this, this little shaft here and that's makes a little bit more sense because then that bearing rides inside here. The next puzzle to solve is this this guy here. So I think part of the problem I'm having is this piece is broken. You can see that used to be attached there. So we'll see if I'm able to actually get this to work. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it. So we'll go ahead and pop on this clip that goes on this. We got this spring which is held in by this pin. All right, that's working. You just gotta be careful about losing that piece now. So we should be done with all the parts that require lubrication or grease. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up a bit here and then we'll finish this off. All right, so the next thing I think we'll put on is this cap. Off camera, I, I opened this up again to put that captive nut in. That's one thing I forgot. So there's a gasket that goes on there, and then this guy should pop right on. And it looks like it's just a uh, socket cap screw that holds that in there. And then we can put our new cap on. I think that turned out all right. So next thing, we'll feed the power cord through here. And I went ahead and just bought a new cord. This is a Service Junior 14 gauge cable. And we'll just strip the ends of these. So the switch should just and then we'll 
we'll go ahead and wire these to the uh, to the switch. And we'll go ahead and uh, pop these brush holders in. And the brushes. Now we'll just throw the circuit board and the switch assembly together. That should hold everything in place when we make the connections. All right, we got all our connections made. So next thing, so we'll put the cord grip on here. All right, we should be good to uh, button this up. There we go, one last screw. All right, we're plugged in. Oh, that sounds a lot better than it did before. All right, so let's finish putting the rest of it together. So the only thing left is this piece. So it uses a captive nut. It goes in there. And it looks like it just uses this piece of metal. Hold everything together. All right, so one final thing. Got myself a new four millimeter hex key from Viha, and that's going to go right in this spot right here. And that's for adjusting the tilt angle and for the blade, inserting a blade. All right, well, I think we got that one done. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that. I'll catch you guys next time.